Am I about to make the world's best cheesesteak? Probably not, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. So what I'm about to do here is wrong because I have too much water here, but what you should do is put three quarters of a cup of warm water in a measuring cup like this so you know that it's three quarters of a cup and then add a teaspoon of sugar, a packet of yeast, give it a stir and let that yeast do its thing. And now we're gonna take two cups of all-purpose flour and about a teaspoon of salt, whisk all that together and then put one large egg in crack it of course and then dump in three tablespoons of melted butter make sure your butter isn't too hot so it doesn't scramble your egg and then dump in that yeast and water and we're just going to combine everything till it's a dough like you know because we're making dough here and uh, I actually had to add about another half a cup of flour because like I said earlier I had too much water but um, you know, it's a pretty wet dough to begin with, but you don't want it just like soupy, like pancake batter or anything. Anyway, uh, this is round about what you're looking for. And you should wind up with that if you start with what I told you. And we're gonna oil a large bowl and transfer the dough into that. Uh, I put way too much oil in there, but uh, if you do the same thing, you can take a paper towel around the top because the oil is going to float over the dough and just kind of soak up, you know, the excess. And we're cold proofing this, so we're just going to cover it and stick it in the fridge for 24 hours. And I've got a couple more coal steaks from DSR Farms. Uh, if you haven't checked my first video out on this, uh, there's a link right here. You should check it out. But these are ribeyes. I'm just trimming them up a little bit because because uh, I feel like it. And you know, you should too. Uh, it is a good point here that you should use a sharp knife unlike this because uh, this knife struggled. And when you get them all trimmed up, just uh, salt, pepper, garlic powder, doing a dry brine for 24 hours in the fridge uncovered on a cooling rack, which if you were paying attention earlier is the same amount of time we're doing the dough. So make sure you've got room in your fridge or a second fridge. Anyway, here we are 24 hours later. I'm gonna put these in a Ziploc bag and then stick them in the freezer for about 40 minutes to let them firm up a little bit. And this will make them a whole lot easier to slice. And I'm just gonna flour the surface right here a little bit, put my dough on top of it, kind of get it, uh, you know, rectangle-y-ish, and start cutting sections of this into dough, like for the rolls. I really made these too big. Uh, the last cut that I made was probably the ideal size, and it's really, in my mind, was just scrap. So keep that in mind, that these things, we're gonna let them rise at room temperature for about an hour here and they're gonna get about twice this size and then they're gonna get a little bit bigger in the oven also. So just keep the size in mind when you're doing this process. And then I just place them on a greased baking sheet and set them over to the side, you know, like in the sun or on the countertop, you know, room temperature, how things are in your room right now, unless it's cold in your room, then warmer. But you know, 70, 72, somewhere in that neighborhood. And in a skillet on a medium low heat, I'm going to melt some bacon grease and cook an onion that I've got chopped up because I don't like bell peppers. And while those caramelize, we're gonna slice up these ribeyes. I chose ribeyes because they have a higher fat content and we're cooking them further than I would cook a normal steak. And that fat is gonna help them not dry out. But we're gonna slice these. I sliced them a quarter inch thick. You can go a little thinner. Probably wind up with a better result if you do. But I wouldn't go any thicker than a quarter inch. And it's been a half hour or so. Got the oven preheated to 425 degrees and I'm just gonna brush the top of these with some melted butter. And these will cook for about 20 minutes. Uh, you're gonna wanna keep an eye on them though. They're gonna start turning brown and looking like bread and stuff. So, you know, they're done then.
And since this steak is so small, it's gonna cook really fast. So, you know, once your onions get the color that you want them, uh, I made a little hole in the center so I could get some good contact with that cast iron and this meat and just threw the meat in the middle. And then, you know, every minute or so, just gave it a stir. Uh, and then eventually just mixed everything together so all those flavors could mingle and the onions could get with the steak and the steak could get with the onions and onion steak babies happened. I, I don't know. S sorry about that. And you're not supposed to slice hot bread, but I mean, I wanted a sandwich. So I'm slicing this open and then slicing it in half, uh, except I did that in the opposite order I told you, and then put mayonnaise on it, put the steak and onions on it, and then put a couple of pieces of Swiss cheese on it. And since the oven was still hot from baking the bread, slid it back in there for a couple minutes and let everything get all good and melty and delicious. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty freaking good, cheesesteak sandwich you know what i'm saying anyway thanks for watching guys i really hope y'all enjoyed like share comment do all the good stuff that you're supposed to do to make me hit a thousand subscribers because i'm almost at a thousand subscribers so anyway have a good one